Hello, and welcome to Harsh Critique. My name is Jeremiah Sumerian, and we're going to talk today about a draft that was submitted by someone whose name is... We're going to pronounce that Analamis. There's another way it could be pronounced, but we're not going to do that. The draft was submitted... I believe on the second to last episode of Harsh Critique as a potential draft to look over, and I have briefly looked at it. It's not a particularly long draft. I briefly looked at it, and it looks like it's appropriate, so let's get started. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-XXX is to be kept in a 4x4x4 four by four by four vacuum chamber. Well, okay, this is where we get started on the problems. So, 4x4x4 four by four by four is dumb already, because if it's not in a 4x4x4 four by four by four, uh, room, if it's in a 4x3x3x3 by th or three by three by three room, or a 5x5x5 five by five by five room, are either of those things going to negatively affect the containment of this object or can it just be stuck in a room appropriate for its size i mean that's dumb on it in and of itself but for uh, beyond that four by four by four what meters centimeters uh, I, just, I don't know in a vacuum chamber which is great i guess the temp temperature inside the room has to be kept above 4,000 degrees Celsius, so we're going to talk about that, I guess. First of all, it's a vacuum chamber. I assume you mean it should be kept in a vacuum, and if it's kept in a vacuum, there's nothing to transfer heat to the object, so there is individual particles of air that manage to make it into your vacuum chamber, because no vacuum chamber is perfect could be, you know, 4,000 degrees Celsius, but what's that going to do for you if none of them are impacting your object? Oh, boy. So, yeah, like, you're not, you're keeping your object in a vacuum, so the temperature is unimportant. I, I, whatever. And it has to be levitated in the center of the room using electromagnets. Neat, I guess. Plans of launching it into space have been proposed. Although, I... Like, you don't include that in your special containment procedures. Like, that's not a thing that you're not... That's not a containment procedure. That's just, hey, by the way, we're thinking about throwing it in space. <laughs> just thought, thought you should know that early on. Description. SCVXX is a metallic ball, one meter in diameter. All attempts to damage the object have failed. Cool. <laughs> the ball. Oh, the ball is extremely cold. Didn't mean that to be that pun, but there we go. The ball is extremely cold, approximately <laughs> negative 205 degrees Celsius. So, <laughs> I just want you to understand your own sentence structure here. You said uh, the ball instead of SCP-XXXX, which is, or, you know, the anomaly or the object. Any, any other word, but no, the ball is <laughs> extremely cold. Okay. Let us take approximately negative 205 degrees Celsius and turn it into what it really means. Extremely cold. So, what this sentence actually says is, the ball is extremely cold being extremely cold. You understand the problem with your redundancy there? You don't need to say extremely cold and then say it's approximately negative 205 degrees Celsius because if you say the ball is... The temperature of the ball, <laughs> the ball, I'm going to say ball a whole bunch, I guess. <laughs> if you say the temperature of the ball is negative 205 degrees Celsius, then we know it's extremely cold because we all have brains and understand what negative 205 degrees Celsius means. SCP-XXX continuously secretes a clear liquid. This liquid is the same temperature as the object and any surface touched by the liquid will freeze instantly. What does it mean by freeze here? You know, we're dealing with a, an object that's being described in scientific terms. So, like, metal is frozen. The surface is frozen. Do you mean cold permanently? I mean, metal can be frozen all the way up to what? I mean, there are plenty of materials that can be frozen all the way up to extremely high temperatures. So what's the difference? What's? I'll tell you right now, having a material that cannot be melted would have some 
astonishing uh, effects on industry i would imagine there there are so many incredible uses for such an for such a thing which i guess would explain how you're able to keep the object in a room that's supposedly 4000 degrees celsius let's assume the vacuum chamber thing is just outside the realm of possibility what you could do is actually expose the material of the containment chamber to this liquid freeze it and then it doesn't matter that you put the room at 4000 degrees but then does it still take damage i don't understand what it means uh, it's a little bit of problems with your logical flow here it's like if i take a piece of steel which is already frozen and i touch it to this liquid it's going to stay frozen and solid all the way up to what is it like three thousand but okay it's frozen and no amount of heat can melt it but you don't have to melt things to shape them. So is this steel still shapeable? Can you heat it up to like uh, 2,000 degrees Celsius? And I, 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 it, it's not going to be melted, I think, by that point. It might be, depending on the steel, I think it might. But say you heat it up to an extremely high temperature. Well, it's not melted, but it can still be hammered into shape. It can still, it loses most of its tensile strength, even though it's not a liquid yet. So what's the... What, it just can't change. It's like a solid piece for forever and always. Because, as I said, if that is true, then <laughs> there are some serious applications for this object. That uh, I think this would revolutionize material science. If the liquid is exposed to temperatures above three thousand degrees Celsius, it will become normal water vapor. If the temperature is above, I think you mean if the object is exposed to temperatures above three thousand degrees Celsius, then the ball will not secrete any liquid. <sighs> also, isn't secrete? Hold on, I'm gonna look this up. I could swear that secrete is something that only living creatures do, but I could be wrong. Yes, it is. Of a cell, a gland, or an organ, produce or discharge. Yeah, so I, I knew that. I fucking knew it. I should have said it at the beginning. Ah, <laughs> uh, I should be cursed. I shouldn't have cursed. I just don't understand it. Yeah, so secrete's definitely not the word you want to use here. Let's just throw that out there. Like, emits, maybe? Some sort of... Uh, discharge. I don't, I don't know. But secrete is always an organic... Like, a, a creature secretes things, not an object. If SCP-XXX comes into contact with any matter, it instantly freezes the surface. The surface? But you said any matter, so not everything has a surface. Some things are just a cloud. The frozen object will then slowly freeze everything it touches. Nope. Everything touching it, including air. The chain reaction does not seem to have a limit, and it could lead to an XK-class scenario. I love it when someone outlines something that is extremely dangerous and worrisome, and then, and then goes, By the way, in case you didn't know, an XK-class scenario could result from this. Like, thanks a lot, man. I'm glad you pointed that out to me. Never would have figured it out on my own. Matter frozen this way can, however, be unfrozen if it is exposed to temperatures above 14,000 degrees Celsius. That is astonishingly hot when you say like wow 14,000 degrees celsius can turn a lot of things into like you you're, you're going beyond melting at that point Did, i don't know the physics of this makes no sense to me because like i feel like the author doesn't understand how temperatures or transitions of states work and then like wrote an object based around transition of states like, pick something you know about first if you're gonna do <laughs> at least it's short at least you didn't waste too much time oh oh of course we have to do a discovery out yeah as if the object was found after foundation members foundation members of the foundation oh, are you a member of the foundation i am a member of the foundation i've got my card right here and to investigate an anomalous meteor <laughs> what was anomalous about it when the, was it just a meteor? Why, why was the foundation involved? Oh, uh, this, uh... That, you know that that rock that fell down yesterday? Yeah, that seems a little weird to me. Why? I don't know yet. Let's investigate. <laughs> when they got to the lab... Your clinical tone in this is bad. Let's just leave that at that. When they got to the landing site, the object had frozen the ground around it. The soil was dug, uh, <laughs> dug up and taken back for testing. Why? Also, here's the thing. So you have, you didn't need to include this part, but obviously because your article is so short, you felt like you needed to make it longer, which is a terrible instinct to follow, by the way. 
Like, if your article doesn't work, don't add to it. Fix what you already have first. Whatever. But, so you add this <laughs> discovery, essentially a discovery log. You don't label it as such, but that's what it is. Telling us how the Foundation came across this thing. And you give us, like, tiny amounts of details when you could have given us way more. Like, if you're going to tell this story, tell that story. What happened? And you know what the worst part about it is? It's boring even though there's a good story in here somewhere. Like, it's, it's just not explored. Like, imagine for a second you're laying in your bed at night. You're just taking a nap. And you hear a... Outside. And you don't know what it is. But you get up. And your next door neighbors get up. And the lights go on in every house around the block. And people come outside. And you look. In the middle of the street, there's this big metal ball and then you notice that your next door neighbor has already gotten there and they touched it and they're frozen solid next to it and there's this wave of frost slowly spreading out from the ball constantly and then it happens to just like get to the point where there's somebody else standing and then they freeze completely solid and they fall over and break in two and like it's coming your way think you can get in your car in time? Do you think you can leave? Can you get away in time? Does it matter? How fast is this going to go? And then you hear the air around you sucking in towards this ball as the actual air around it is frozen and just sinks to the f ground like a snow. I mean, that's a story, right? Just take it from there. Heck, that's even a horror story if you work it right. It's a short story, maybe a, even a flash fiction story, but it's a story. But this doesn't do that. This just tells you about a fucking metal ball. Anyway, that's it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually done now. <sighs> you know what bothers me the most? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not done. You know what bothers me the most about this kind of thing is that people have good ideas and they have good stories and they find excuses not to tell them. And that bothers me more than anything. <laughs> Just fucking tell your story, goddammit. <laughs> Just tell your story. Don't do not do this. Don't, oh my god. The SAP format is supposed to refine things. Yes, it is a little slightly harder than just writing it as a tale. And I, by the way, just writing a story is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to write it as an SAP article, it's, it, it is harder but your resultant work should come out better for it because you have to constrain it to these parameters. And you'll find oftentimes when you constrain a big idea to small parameters that the best parts of it come through. But that's not what happened here. The best parts of it were left on the fucking cutting room floor. And all we got was the metallic ball. And it, and it secretes a liquid. That's it. And a bunch of temperature stuff that makes no sense because the physics of it doesn't make any sense. And it's like, it's anomalous, so the physics doesn't make any sense, but it still pretends like the physics makes some sense. I just, I don't, I don't know. It, whatever. If you liked the video, I'm really done. If you liked the video, uh, scroll down, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell next to that so you can be notified when I make a new video. And definitely head over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like the people on the screen here already have. Thank you for letting me know I'm not alone out here, and I will see you again on Tuesday.